Hey, what's going on? You know who it is. You know what it is. All right, you guys, peep game. Um, you know, I like blowing these corn balls out the, out the water, these lying ass, fake, uh, inconsistent blackness content creators because, like I said, they easy to expose and they have to tell the story. And I, I, I really don't understand why you dudes continue to listen to these corn balls, these Saturday night suckers that just sit up there and lie and don't know what the hell they talking about. And I laugh at the fact that these people trying to save face and try to save Al Heyman in the PBC. And once again, they try to play that, oh, well, if you don't take the side of Errol Spence or Al Heyman, you some kind of sellout or some kind of, look, that's tired, that's fake, that's, that, that's not gonna fly anymore. All this stuff about the other side of the street and the plantation stuff, that's been completely exposed because we know where the real plantation is where you got dudes that can't even, you know what I'm saying, speak for themselves. You got dudes that got that have to go through one dude before they can even speak or issue a statement who don't even own, own a likeliness. But they quick to holler that, that black shit with somebody else. Man, get y'all asses out of here, man. Like I said, y'all content creators, like I said, is fake, faker than a bitch with three titties. And like I said, I'm gonna keep going in on, on y'all. And if you think I'm talking to you, well, you know what, too fucking bad. That, that's just real because like, I ain't even gonna lie to y'all. Some of these dudes that I didn't interact with over the years, I really regret even crossing the path with them because at the end of the day, these dudes is just fake, fake, fake. They ain't about the culture, they ain't about the race, they all about themselves, views, and money. Like I said, I don't do this for the money. I do this because I like talking to y'all and interacting with y'all. But, and I don't like to, you know what I'm saying? And I don't like to really try to character assassinate people. Unless they like asking for it. Some of these dudes, they, they, you know what I'm saying? They bring it on themselves. I never said I was a saint, never said I was perfect. But these dudes can't keep it real to save their lives. And I'm gonna tell you what they really mad about, what they really heard about, because a lot of these dudes just saw that Terrence Crawford can move on his own because he actually moving on his own, making his own moves. You know, um, allegedly he gonna have a career high payday. That's just real talk. He gave the PBC and Al Heyman months to come with a fair deal. And all that came down to it is they did not think that Terrence Crawford was gonna call a bluff and accept that 35, 65 stuff. They didn't think it was gonna happen. And then when he is when he decided to accept it, then they talked about, well, we'll give you that off of, you know, the the net gross before taxes. Like I said, they could end up paying that dude like three million dollars or something, or less than that. And then, you know, these dudes just don't want to accept the truth, what's going on. Cause I remember they was talking about 80-20, which was a so damn 70-30. So like I said, what was this revised offer? So let me guess, right after he signed to fight another fight, then you want to have a revised offer? And then you got dudes sitting up here talking about, um, oh, well, how did this deal get put together so fast? Well, you always supposed to have a plan B. You would think after like three months when they couldn't get a deal done, hell yeah, I would've started negotiating a, a fight too. They just, like I said, a lot of these Errol Spence fanboys just mad because Bud showed them, hey man, I can move on without you. Now you on my dime. I got a fight date and you don't. Which you wasn't really trying to make in the first place. I mean, let's just keep it real. 
I guarantee you if the roles was reversed, and let's just say Errol Spence did what Terrence Crawford did, everybody and their mama would have been talking about he a boss and he, he, he did a G move and all this kind of stuff. But because for some reason people have this disdain for Terrence Crawford, which I'm gonna talk about that in, in, in probably a separate video, which, yeah, I am going to talk about this in a separate video. Because, like I said, I'm not worried about nobody. I'm going to keep telling y'all, I ain't worried about none of you niggas being mad at me. None of you dudes control what I say, and I keep telling y'all that. I don't answer to nobody. That's just real talk. Remember, just because I'm affiliated with people don't mean that I think like them. And I'm going to say this again. I don't fuck with all them dudes. And that's just real talk. And I'm not like talking bad on, on, on people, but I'm just keeping it real. Like I said, nobody tells me what to say. Nobody. I don't answer to nobody. I don't check in with nobody. Whatever I say come out of my motherfucking mouth and nobody else's. It's just like, for real, it's like, the thing is, you can't explain logic to people. You can't explain sense to people. Because all that's happening is that you fanagers are just looking real stupid right now. Like I said, I read the whole damn article, something that y'all didn't do. This just reminds me of this stuff that Manny Pacquiao pulled about the, the uh, you know, the, the, the stuff with Floyd. When Floyd took the IV, where he tried to make it look like Floyd didn't take the IV, and then it was proven that uh, you know, the, I think the eve of the fight or, or a couple of days before the fight, which Manny Pacquiao tried to make it look like they didn't know and then come to find out that they was told like two weeks before the fight. And this is the exact same thing. They already knew that Terrence Carver was uh, about to announce this fight and then here they come. Oh, we sent him a revised offer. Just like in July, they said they signed a contract. But what was the context of the contract? What was the stipulation? What was in the contract? And once again, we were saying, okay, well, show us proof. And then, of course, they couldn't provide no proof that it was a contract. Then you heard all kind of stuff about, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be fighting the Cowboys Stadium. And that was tweeted by Errol Spence himself. So this was tweeted like, I think back in September. So who was you supposed to be fighting the Cowboys Stadium? You tweeted that. We knew Bud wasn't fighting you in no Cowboys Stadium. So what are you talking about? See, that's what I mean. Nobody put those stories out because at the end of the day, the agenda was somehow, some way to try to make this Terrence Crawford's fault. Now, I'm going to say this. And this is just real talk. I'm not on Terrence Crawford's payroll. I'm just keeping it balanced. I'm just keeping it fair. I've said on several occasions, do I believe Errol Spence can win this fight? Absolutely, if they, they fight. And I said Terrence Crawford could win this fight. I've never picked a winner in this fight. I've said on several occasions, I know who I think would win the fight. But like I said, you can't talk logic with some of you dudes here because you got y'all head so far up one dude's ass in, in a, a promoter slash manager um, dictator that, ain't, that don't even have the decency to address or even talk to the media, but y'all think that's a boss move to a certain degree. That's kind of cowardly. Say what you want to say, like I said about Eddie Hearn, but he make himself available to the media. Say what you want to say about Bob Arum. He makes himself available to the media. Say what you want to say about De La Hoya, but he makes himself available to the media. Say what you want to say about Richard Schaefer. He makes himself available to the media. But this dude, who everybody name, they have to say after they win a fight, he, he can't make himself available. Won't even issue a statement. But then he have all these talking heads. 
And then people trying to wonder like, and then and, and then you got people like, well, damn, how are we supposed to give you a fair shake if you won't even like a, like acknowledge us like we're beneath you, and that's how I take it. Your name is always out there, but then you too good to address the media. The media that wanted to help you. The media that's trying to help you, but I know you don't need our help. You too big. We're beneath you. We're nothing but YouTubers. Funny thing is, you got some of these YouTubers that got more influence than some, pe some people on TV. But like I said before, if the roles was reversed, I promise you, everybody would be on Errol Spence's nutsack. Talking about what a boss he is, what a genius he is. But you have this hatred that I just find really crazy towards Terrence Crawford. It's just absurd. But we know who is the main culprits. And like I said, they, they cowards too. Like I said, at the end of the day, just say you a fanboy. And just keep it 100. Just say you don't like, I, I mean, for real. Just say you don't like Terrence Crawford. And like I said, you would think, uh, like, for real. Y'all treating Terrence Crawford like he Kanye or something. You ain't never heard Terrence Crawford, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, put down his own community. You ain't never heard Terrence Crawford say, uh, slavery was a choice. You ain't never saw Terrence Crawford say white lives matter. But the funny part about it is you got y'all the same niggas that's defending Kanye West. Just, I, I, I just don't get it. You hate Terrence Crawford, but some of y'all is defending Kanye West. I don't, I, like I said, make it make sense. But you can't. So, I'm going to just keep calling this hypocrisy out. But anyway, it's your boy Town Biz. I'm out.